All right, the first thing I want to do right now with this video is give you some background on an excerpt that you'll be reading from uh, Chris Crow's novel, Mississippi Trial, 1955. This book is much like Fire from the Rock. Um, this book is fictional, so the whole entire story is made up. And then you have out of nowhere some, um, because it's historical fiction, you have some illusion that Chris Crow brings in that makes this relative uh, down in muddy Mississippi, um, Emmett Till is actually the illusion that is brought into this novel. Emmett Till is actually a character in the book, in the beginning of the book, uh, then of course in the past throughout his murder, um, and then all the way through the case to the very end. Um, so it's like Fire from the Rock where you have Sylvia trying to be a part of the Little Rock Nine, if she's going to be on the list, will she not? Um, you have a situation in this book where there is a kid who has the name, um, it's spelled like this, Hiram. His name is Hiram. And Hiram becomes friends uh, with Emmett. Now, Hiram actually has, has a lot in common with Emmett because they both are from the North. So, as you know, Emmett came down um, from the north to visit his grandpa to Muddy, Mississippi. Hiram is equally still, er, coming to visit uh, his grandpa. So, I, that is interesting. Okay, you have two characters coming down here. Now, Hiram, Hiram is white. And um, he, when he comes down to the south to see his grandpa... He starts to realize that his grandpa is very racist. Um, so you have Hiram's grandpa, and that will also be in the excerpt. Um, but he's white. He's racist. Um, and then you have Emmett, who is staying with his uncle, just like, you know, that's really what happened. So you have these two sets of uh, people that are going to come together um, in this book, and they, you know, Hiram and Emmett are actually friends. Now, as you can imagine, the grandpa wants nothing to do with the uncle. These two are not friends. They can't be because the grandpa is racist, and that would never work out. Um, but Hiram and Emmett, because they're kids, and kids usually don't know racism until they're taught to be racist, uh, the two of them are getting along really well and have a great friendship. So there is one kid who is called, he goes by the name R.C. And R.C. is white and he is friends with Hiram, so to speak. I'm going to put friends, you know, like not really friends, but friends. Um, Hiram does not like R.C. Uh, Hiram knows that R.C. is racist and Hiram does not like how R.C. treats Emmett. As the book goes on, uh, Hiram and Emmett get closer. R.C. becomes more troublesome and um, actually is with the two brothers, Bryant, the Bryant brothers, if you remember their names, are actually with the Bryant brothers the night that they kill, kidnap and kill Emmett. So he's actually with them. So as you can see, um, this is real, this is not. Um, but by making it fiction, they have squeezed R.C. into this event that night when Emmett got murdered, and that's why it's fiction. Um, and this event right here, you know, Emmett uh, being down there visiting his uncle, they've squeezed in this Hiram friend, which, you know, that's not real, that didn't happen. So you have a historical fiction book here um, dealing with these characters. And after the murder, Hiram is subpoenaed. Hiram is asked to go to court to testify in behalf of Emmett, to help Emmett. And his grandfather flips out. So as we read... As we read um, this book, I'm going to ask that you follow along in the copy that you have at your desk. So go ahead and open up your book that you have on your desk 
and you can open it to page uh, 130, let's see here, yeah, top of page 133. We're going to start at the top of page 133. Um, you'll see, are you Hiram? Okay? All right, so what's happened here is the policeman, the, maybe perhaps the deputy, the sheriff, they have shown up at Hiram's uh, grandpa's place, and they're asking if it's him because they're probably going to give him a subpoena. So let's go ahead and start here. Remember, you are following along. That's not an option. So you have your book open to page 133, and you are going to follow along with me as we read this together. And this is just an excerpt, so we'll read just a few pages. Are you Hiram? Slumping against the doorway, I tipped my head back and let out a sigh. Look at here, boy, the deputy snapped. You hire him or not? I stepped through the front door and pulled it closed behind me. Yes, sir. My voice shook a little. Consider yourself served, son. He handed me a sealed envelope, then held out his clipboard. Sign here. And that just lets the judge know that you received this subpoena to appear in court. So there it is, a subpoena, which is a piece of paper that is handed to you and says that by law, you have to show up in court to testify. It's not an option. It's not a choice. You have to. Court, don't tell me Sheriff Smith never said nothing to you about the trial they're fixing to have up in summer. You know, about the colored boy that got himself killed, kidnapped and killed. He asked me to stay in Greenwood, but he didn't say anything about a trial. The deputy handed me a pencil and taped the clip and tapped the clipboard. Not my problem, son. Signing this only means I handed you the subpoena. Whether or not you end up testifying in court is up to the judge and the lawyers. And I suppose, maybe because you're a, you're a juvenile, that you won't even have to testify if you don't want to. But I'm just delivering this. He paused, looking at the clipboard. And if you'll sign it, I can get back to work. I signed the form, and he left. Grandpa was awake when I came back into the house. Naomi again? Oh, by the way, sorry. Naomi is a girl uh, down in the south in muddy Mississippi. She's a made-up character. Um, she's not real. Hiram likes her. Okay. Not important if you... Um, if you're not reading the book entirely. No, sir, it was the deputy. He brought me this. I handed the envelope to Grandpa. He opened it and read the subpoena. When he finished, he didn't say anything for a while. Finally, he said, I don't like this, son, not one bit. It's one thing for you to go talk to George Smith about RC, what R.C.'s done and said, but testifying in court, you're just a boy, and this is business is too dirty for you to be getting mixed up in. Do I have a choice? Of course you have a choice. Last I checked, we're still living in the United States of America, regardless of the NAACP and those outside agitators and what they say. If I was you, Hiram, I'd keep my mouth shut about this whole thing. It's going to be ugly, maybe even dangerous. Northern rabble, Northern rabble rousers will be there, and some of our local rednecks aren't going to take too kindly to that. And didn't you say that RC has threatened you? Okay, so Northern rabble rousers, I mean, honestly, what that is implying to me is that the people who are coming down from the north trying to stick their nose in the ways, if you will, of the south, and that obviously has the racist southerns upset. Um, and then he referred to himself, the southerners, as the rednecks. All right, so he's saying, look, listen, you know, if you go in... Anybody who goes in and testifies on Emmett's behalf, you're going to be asking for trouble. Anybody who sticks up for a, an African-American during this time in a courtroom where two white men are being accused of murder are going to be given a hard time. Obviously, Hiram's grandpa doesn't want that to happen to him. R.C., if you remember, is the kid that I said was white Hiram's quote-unquote friend. Um, he was with the, the brothers when they murdered Emmett in our fictional story. So I'm guessing that Emmett, I'm sorry, that Hiram would have to testify against R.C. And that's probably what his grandfather is advising him not to do. 
not exactly threatened, but I sure felt warned. He doesn't want me talking to the Sheriff Smith about what he did to Emmett while he was fishing. That boy's dangerous. You ought to lay low, keep quiet, and let things work themselves out. No need for you to risk getting hurt. The judge can make you appear in court, but you don't have to tell everything you know, especially when testifying might put you in serious danger. I nodded. R.C. scared me, for sure. But shouldn't I tell all truth, even if I was afraid? So he's like, listen, I know you're going to say that it's really dangerous, but I'm pretty sure I should be telling you, I should be telling the truth. In a court of law, when you swear in and you say you're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, not doing that is breaking a law. So I bet Hiram is really confused about what he should do. Now, what about this RC? Grandpa asked. You want me to talk to the sheriff about his threatening you? You got a right to feel safe here anywhere and the law's bound to protect you if you're worried that he's going to come after you i can ask the sheriff to have him locked up if they find him or maybe have a deputy keep an eye on the house while you're here you know that boy hiram you know he can be real trouble okay so he's telling him that rc jeez, i gotta make an r <laughs> rc is going to cause him a lot of problems I guess I wouldn't mind if a deputy kind of hung around here for a while, just in case. I hoped I'd never see R.C. again, because if he really wanted to get me, having a deputy around wasn't going to stop him. If you talk, to, if you talk in court, Hiram, you're going to stir up R.C. pretty good. There's no way you can keep it a secret. Trials are public, and whatever gets said is going to show up in the Commonwealth. So the Commonwealth is a newspaper, so Grandpa is telling Hiram that if you stir up R.C., if you make him mad, then no, nobody's going to keep a secret. If you talk in court, then that secret is going to become public. And he's saying that it's probably going to happen in the newspaper. So whatever he says in court is going to be spread throughout in the newspaper. So even if old R.C. has enough sense to steer clear of the summer courthouse... He's going to hear that you spoke against him in court. So the grandpa has some serious advice there. Thinking about R.C. made me shiver. I know I'd be crazy to tell everything at the trial. R.C. scares me to death. If I had my choice, I'd be on a train tonight headed back to Tempe. But Emmett Till is dead. Grandpa, for no good reason, he, had, he has much of a right to be here in LaFleur County as I do. He was just a kid, a kid like me. Hold on, son. He was a colored boy who didn't know his place. That doesn't give R.C. and those two other men the right to murder him. Grandpa's face turned serious. You don't know for sure who did the killing, Hiram. And you've got to remember that Ch that Chicago boy made his own trouble. If he'd stay in this place, he'd be alive today. And believe me, son, I truly wish none of this happened. Grandpa looked exhausted. Not a single bit of it. But it did happen. And that boy is dead. And we both know that R.C. had something to do with it. Sure, he scares me. But, I, but don't I owe Emmett something? Isn't it my duty to do something about it? You don't owe that boy a darn thing. For starters, he's dead. All the talking in the world isn't going to change that. And you're in the Delta, son. No jury down here would even dream of punishing white boys for putting a Negro in his place. Sure, they got carried away, something awful, but they're local men, white men. The only thing you'll do by speaking up in that trial is to get yourself hurt, maybe hurt bad. Grandpa sounded so wrong-headed, I couldn't believe it. Maybe some of what Dad was always spouting about e equality and the American dream had rubbed off on me. Don't American laws apply in the Delta? What R.C. and those two men did was wrong, Grandpa. It makes me sick to just think about it. Because you are a decent young man and you come from good stock, Hiram. If I'm so decent, shouldn't I tell what I know about R.C. in court? He killed a boy, Grandpa. 
and I could have stopped him. No, Hiram, you already did more than you had to. Calling the sheriff and everything, not many boys your age would have had the courage to, but I should have done more. Maybe I should have stopped R.C. that night. Maybe made him stay here. Maybe if I had followed him, Grandpa waved his hand impatiently. You're forgetting that the two grown men are already in jail for the crime, and they've admitted to kidnapping the boy. They would have done, they would have done what they did, whether whether or not R.C. was there. And you don't know for sure that he was there, Hiram. But he told me he was going to money with a couple of men, and that they were going to teach that Northern Negro a lesson. Emmett disappeared the next night. Just because he planned to go up there doesn't mean he ever did. Look at what you're saying, son. You've already convicted R.C. for a crime you can't be sure he committed. How are you going to look in court? Are you willing to accuse a boy everybody knows is a big talker of kidnapping and murder based on a conversation you had with him one night? Grandpa, I know R.C., and I know what he can do. I've seen what he's done before. So what? Do you have proof that he went to Moe's Wright's house that night? That he was with Bryant and Milam? That he helped them kill that boy? You got any proof of that? But he did. Don't matter what he said, Hiram. The court's interested in what he did, in what can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you really think that a jury made up of white Delta men is going to take your word over that of a local boy? Like I said, if you tell everything in that trial, the only thing you're going to do is get yourself hurt and embarrass me. Embarrass you? People around here have long memories, son. They remember how your daddy was, how I couldn't talk or whip any sense into him when he got to be about your age. You have no idea how humiliating it is when a boy shames his family. Friends and neighbors said that they understood, that they felt sorry about how Harlan and I battled. But I know that behind my back, they talked about how I was a poor father, that if I had raised Harlan right, he wouldn't have shamed me. His voice trailed off. Your daddy, you can't be like your dad. Grandpa sat quietly until Ruth Ann called us to supper. He looked up, a little confused, like he'd been dreaming or something, and he waved me over to help him out of his chair. You get in court and talk against white folks, Hiram, and people around here or if people around here will see that your dad will see your daddy and you. Contrary, that's what he was. Didn't like the South, didn't like the Southern ways, the Delta wasn't good enough for him. He wiped his mouth and he, and his hand trembled. I don't think I could take it again. That public condem condemnation, friends gossiping, feeling shame because of what my boy did and said. I raised you different, Hiram. You are not like your father. You are a Delta boy through and through. Grandpa patted my arm. You're a good boy, son, and I'm proud of you. And I know that you're going to do the right thing. Wow. So... You can probably make the inference that Hiram's grandpa and Hiram's dad do not get along. Since Hiram is away from his mom and dad, visiting his grandpa down in the south, Hiram is listening to his grandpa talk very poorly, right, of his dad. And obviously grandpa and his son, they didn't get along. And I'm making the inference that Hiram's dad is not racist and that Hiram's dad must have stood up and done something right that has made a fool of grandpa, um, that all the good old white boys are probably thinking that grandpa should have been more strict with his son um, so that he wouldn't be somebody um, that didn't like the South and, and flew to the North. Hiram's dad couldn't get to the North fast enough, which is why Hiram is from the North. Um, and that's where they stay. So the fact that Hiram came down to the South to visit his grandpa shows that Hiram was trying to have a relationship with his grandpa. But I see that with this Emmett trial and everything that's happening, I feel like Hiram is starting to see the real side of his grandpa and that his grandpa's not a good person. And right here, you have a grandpa trying to teach his grandson hate. 
you have a white man teaching a child to be racist. He says, you are a Delta boy through and through. You're a good boy. I've been, I'm proud of you, and I know you're going to do the right thing, which is to not stick up for Emmett Till. So right here, you have a perfect example of the grandpa teaching his grandson how to show hate. So this was a really big argument. It started um, on page 133. So if you want to crease that down, or maybe there's a post-it in there, and it went all the way, I stopped reading at about page 138. So this is where you have um, Grandpa and Hiram's argument that you're going to be using for today's assignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this paper out of the purple basket. Um, this is technically, you know, part one. And this is where we're gonna do a little brainstorming about uh, the evidence that we have to go back into pages 133 to 138. We need to find some good pieces of evidence. Um, so as you can see, we have, we can already check off one, we did that. Hiram is served with a subpoena. This means he will have to go to court to testify. Yep, we know that. With your partner, fill in the list below with arguments that Hiram should testify and also arguments that he should not testify. These reasons should come from the text and should include page numbers. You can work alone or you can work with somebody uh, right directly next to you or across from you, but we're not gonna move out of our seat. But if there's somebody at your table that you would like to work with, I don't mind. Uh, you can work together to come up with these reasons. So attack this with first, remembering that it has to be within these pages, but you're going to want to come up with, um, I don't know, let's get, let's get three reasons on both sides. No, let's do two. Wait, no, three, because I'm gonna have you write a paragraph. Okay. So go ahead and get me three reasons why um, Hiram should testify, and then see if you can find three reasons why Hiram should not testify. Um, and I would probably in parentheses include the page number and I don't care if you want to use quotation marks for your evidence um, or whoa, if you want to paraphrase. You could paraphrase the evidence or you can use um, quotation marks, okay? So I'll let that be up to you as far as um, how you want to put the evidence in. But again, you're looking for arguments that Hiram should testify, and then I need you to find a couple of reasons within those page numbers, 133 to 138, why Hiram should not testify. So reasons why Hiram should not testify, if you think about it, that's gonna be whenever the grandpa is speaking. The grandpa will give you reasons why Hiram should not testify. Hiram will give you reasons why he should testify. So hopefully that will help you realize um, what you're looking for when you go to fill out these answers. Okay, so just remember, Hiram should not testify are gonna be the reasons that grandpa gives. Reasons why Hiram should testify will come from Hiram himself. All right, so I'm gonna have you go ahead and pause the video and I'm gonna have you fill this out with a partner. Once you have three reasons for each side, you can go ahead and start working on part two of the assignment, which are um, a couple of multiple choice questions on the first side. And I just kinda want you to take a pencil and underline that you on the front on part two right here, the front side, you're gonna be really focusing on grandpa's viewpoint. Grandpa's viewpoint. So if you were to write a claim on grandpa's viewpoint, it would be that he should go to court, right? And then down here, if you were to write a counterclaim um, for grandpa's viewpoint, you would have to make sure that you address Hiram's side first. So when you go on the back, we're gonna flip it. It's gonna be Hiram's side. So you're going to write a claim why Hiram should not go up to trial. And then if you were to write a counterclaim, it would be addressing grandpa's side first. 
So go ahead and finish part two.